Hey, BG. Um, was, talked to Matt Burke yesterday, and he mentioned how you're playing at an elite level and that uh, he, he thinks that you're probably a little bit overlooked. How do you feel about either of those thoughts that Matt told us about? Uh, you know, that just motivates me to keep working, keep on going, keep doing what I've been doing, and, you know, we'll, we'll figure out the rest later on. Zach and Dave Zangaro. Hey, Brandon, you mentioned the other night uh, changes to your diet this offseason, and, and that's something Matt Burke mentioned as as well. What specifically did you do differently this offseason as far as your diet? You know, just just stay to the plan that I've been using every offseason, but when you get to the season, you know, you get to traveling, you get to eating different things at different places. Uh, just really uh, watching myself on my urges, you know, to want to, you know, just eat anything on, you know, just because we in New Orleans, you get the – you get this, you know, you just because, you know, you go here, that's what they known for. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, just really resisting your urges, staying to the plan. And, man, it's been uh, it's been paying off for me. As a, as a quick follow-up to that, this was a little different of an offseason, obviously, because you were home a lot. Did that require more home-cooked meals? Like, like, did you make changes there and in terms of what you cooked at home? Well, I always had the plan as far as, you know, the chef and stuff, but some, but you got to want to eat it. You know, like you get tired of it after a while and you want to go eat what, you, what you've what you been craving to eat, your, your cheat meals, and then your cheat meals turn into everyday meals if you, if you start to create that habit again. But I, I feel like, um, you know, definitely the COVID, COVID has uh, helped a whole lot in that area. And now that I've seen the results and, and, you know, I'm loving what's going on, I mean, it's only motivated me to stay like this, you know, and try to make it a really lifestyle. Even and less. Hey, Brandon, what's the process like trying to get ready to face or potentially face a quarterback that there's not much film on? Uh, you know, you just gotta, that's when you gotta really just stick to what you, what you do. You know, you gotta, um, see how they're trying to attack you. That's the adjustment we'll probably make in the game, uh, too, because they're going to probably show something that we didn't see or we couldn't see, like you said, because he's not as much film, but we do know that, um, you know, this is what he does well. And this is what, you know, this could potentially be based off how they run their offense, you know. So uh, we got a good plan for either one. Uh, but at, at the same time, I think that, uh, you know, it always comes down to just to us executing uh, the plays. Lesson and Kristen. Hey, BG. So you work against uh, all the offensive tackles. Uh, with Jason Peters coming back now, uh, who's harder to get around, uh, Jordan Mailata or J.P.? Uh, they both, I mean, they both bring some good stuff to the table and they both big, you know, but uh, Jordan definitely is one of those guys that's, um, you know, not as experienced as JP, but I feel like, um, you know, just if you're just thinking about how big he is, uh, Jordan is the, is the hardest one to get around. Kristen and Jeff McLean. Hey, BG, uh, what are you seeing right now from Ezekiel Elliott and this Dallas run game on film? Because it looks like, you know, the, the offensive line has gone through a lot of changes. Zeke maybe looks like he hasn't been uh, as productive as we've seen in past years. What, what are you seeing from, from their line and their run game right now? What I see, you know, is um, those guys just trying to figure it out. And so um, I know for us, we can't make – we can't go out there – and think that they're not going to give us their best shot. They're going to come out here and they're going to try to run the ball and they're going to try to, you know, play smash my football. That's what I feel. Uh, that's every week. But uh, especially them because they're trying to get him going. And, you know, I think that um, that creates an identity, you know, for uh, who they have in. So we got to make sure we, we put that fire out early and then we'll get everything we want, um, you know, once we handle that. Jeff and Damo. Uh, BG, we all know that you're a team first guy, but... Uh, individual accolades have kind of escaped you over your career, and you know how it goes sometimes. You need the sack numbers to, to get those those honors. Do you feel like maybe there's finally the opportunity, you know, with you already having six and so we're not even halfway through the season, of, you know, finally getting that, that Pro Bowl bid? I will say that this is the best start I've had, you know, um, you know, since I've been here. Even during the year we won the Super Bowl, I uh, ended up getting, you know, some in the beginning and some towards the end. But uh, I think that uh, this has been the most consistent um, I have been as far as, like, back-to-back -back games, you know, with sacks and stuff. But I know for me, 
I'm just I'm excited, man, because I'm feeling good uh, and I'm happy where I am. And I'm hopefully uh, we can I can get up on that wall. Uh, that's always been a goal of mine. Get up on the uh, Pro Bowl wall. But you know, um, really, you know, this year I'm, I'm trying to go all pro too. You know, I'm trying to I'm trying to do it all. I'm trying to get a ring, and you know, like you said, get some individual uh, accolades because you know, because of how I'm feeling. Damo and then Bo. Yeah, getting back to the nutrition question, Brandon. You steal anything from the TB12 diet? Oh no, nah, no. Nah. <laughs> but you know, he is. Uh, I mean, when I start feeling real bad, I gotta, I, I gotta, you know, I gotta hit him up. Cause he probably be out the league at that point, you know. Uh, I don't know how many more years he's trying to play, but uh, for sure trying to get that uh, that type of longevity. We have time for two more, so we'll go Bo and then Jeff Skaversky. I'll stick on that topic, Brandon. Did you say you have your own chef? Well, you know, we got somebody cooking for us. Uh, we we'll just hire somebody. They end up cooking, uh, and they leave the food now. Leave the food on the porch uh, so that we can, you know, have food for. Monday through Wednesday, and then they come back and drop it for Thursday, Friday, and then weekends we kind of just free for all, you know, on whatever. And uh, but you know, we still try to keep it um, uh, healthy, you know, whatever choice that you you have. And then you have your cheat meal, but I don't go crazy like I normally would. What was the What was the hardest thing for you to cut out? What's like the cheat meal that you really wanted that was tough to tough um, to get? Um, you know what? Uh, some good. Some good soul food, uh, like uh, like most, um, or pizza. Pizza was another one that you got to let go of that bread. You know, um, being here in Philly, the rolls from the cheesesteaks. I mean, so many different things to pick. You know, I, I'm always looking for something new uh, just so that you can kind of, you know, because we got a lot of restaurants here, so you try, try out a lot. But I know uh, where, what to stay away from that I'm not, you know, real, real good with. And so uh, I've been doing really good. Go ahead, Jeff. Man, you're making me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's lunchtime, man. I'm about to go eat, eat a little I, bit right now. I know you guys get locked in and it's a week-to-week -week season, but you've been here a long time. Is there just a different feeling in the air, in the locker room, out on the practice field when it's Cowboys week? Oh, yeah, it's a different intensity because, you know, you know these guys don't like us and we don't like them. And, you know, we know that they over there hooping and hollering and talking about what they're going to do to us just as much as we are. And so uh, it's just one of those uh, games that's going to be physical. And uh, they know us, we know them. And it's all about who won it, who's, who's hungry for that W. What did you notice that, that kept this team together? Well, I mean, you know, obviously, you know, we've had some guys that have been here for a long time. You know, they have a head coach that has uh, demonstrated an ability to, to win in this league and uh, that has had a lot of success here. We've had some success in the building, obviously, over the last few seasons. So... You know, that all helps and, you know, having some some leaders who, like you said, you know, me, JP, a lot of us have been here for a while and we've been through the ups and downs and you know that if you just stay the course and you keep grinding and you keep, uh, you know, just, you know, trying to get better, trying to do your job just that much better, um, you know, that, you know, this is a long season and, uh, you know, you got plenty of time to, to continually uh, improve. So, you know, obviously we wish we were sitting better than where we're at right now, but, um, you know, all we can do to correct that and all we can do to try and, uh, uh, and, and is to try and get better and try and uh, improve each and every single week and go out there with the uh, effort in practice, effort in meeting rooms to try and improve in the areas that we are struggling in. And, you know, that's all we can do. Lesson and Mike. Hey, Jason. So if Jordan Mailata ends up playing right tackle this week, uh, how difficult will that be for him? Will that be a, a, a huge adjustment, uh, do you think? And he's been there before. Uh, it's not like it's the first time that he's ever practiced there or anything. Uh, yeah. You know, what What do you see there? Yeah, I mean, he's, you know, he's played a lot of right tackle for us. Um, you know, I, you know, it's always going to be uh, a switch up, trying to switch stances when you've played in one spot for, uh, you know, a while. Um, and that's anybody, you know, uh, you know, especially when you're going over to the other side of the ball, you got a different foot back. There's a different balance that you're really working with. Uh, you want your weight more on your inside leg. So, um, you know, you're, you're, you have a different dominant hand that you're using in pass pro. So, you know, there's, there are little differences, but, you know, he's not, uh, completely new to that. And that's, 
that's something that's pretty standard across the league. You know, you got to be w able to uh, play both sides. You got to be able to uh, find a way to have value in this league and be able to uh, answer the call when uh, you know you're put in certain situations. So, uh, you know, wherever Jordan plays, I'm sure that he'll be uh, ready to go. Mike and then Kristen. Hey, Jason. Um, you've obviously been around Howie Roseman for a while. He makes a, a lot of tr in-season trades trade deadlines coming up. I was just curious how much the locker room is typically aware of this time of year and how much that's discussed, kind of the potential for another trade, and if there's ever any excitement because you know how he's going to make a move, potentially. Um, I can tell you personally, I don't really think about it at all. Um, I don't want to speak for everybody, uh, but that's all stuff that's obviously outside of our control, and uh, you don't want to get caught up looking at stuff like that, in my opinion. I think you just... You know, my job is to play center and make sure that our offensive line is in a position to be successful and, um, you know, worrying about, uh, you know, could be's and maybe's and if we if we's and all that stuff that doesn't really help our me do my job that much better. So, um, you know, obviously some of the stories get seen and whatnot, but for the most part, I think that that's that's stuff that's out of out of sight, out of mind and. Uh, you know, until it happens, and then you you, you figure out, uh, you know, if something happens, then you figure out a way to, uh, you know, uh, welcome those pieces or, uh, you know, uh, find a way to utilize them to be successful. Kristen and then Zach. Hey, Jason. Hope you're doing well. We had a chance to talk with Slay, who was obviously going through his first Eagles-Cowboys rivalry this year, and he, you know, was kind of saying it's like Super Bowl or die. He's getting his first chance at this rivalry. For you, as someone who has been through this rivalry so many years now, does it continue to get even more ingrained each time, each season, you guys go up in these matchups? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I've already made my I've, – I've talked about the Dallas Cowboys in the past, um, and I think my feelings have been known on that. I think you – you know, somewhat it gets overblown a little bit, but obviously it's a huge in-season opponent. Uh, there's a lot of uh, – uh, past experiences, not just with myself, but with the city and this team uh, that, that give it a little bit of extra emotion for sure. Um, it's a shame that the, the the link won't be packed like it usually is because it's always a fun environment for the Cowboys game. Um, but, you know, obviously at the end of the day, you're going out there and you're playing football. So, um, you know, and that's regardless. You know, even if you're playing the Cowboys, you're playing anybody, you're playing in a playoff game, you're playing in the Super Bowl. Uh, at the end of the day, you got to go out there and you got to play ball. You got to do your job. You got to be a, a, accountable to uh, uh, of being in the right place at the right time and and run the offense or the defense that's called. And um, at the end of the day, that's how you win games, not by uh, worrying about all these other things. We only have time for one more, and then Jason has to get to meetings. So we'll finish here with Zach. Hey, Jason, I'm, I'm about six days late asking you this, but I didn't get the chance to talk to you after the game. Uh, what happened yeah. on the personal foul there? And then I, I saw the video. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess your e emotions when Boston scored. How would you explain that? Well, yeah, I mean, we were really fired up. Uh, had, we're putting together a tremendous drive. And then obviously, you know, one of the crucial things that we always harp on for two-minute drills is no penalties, no sacks. Um, you know, those are things that can devastate a drive. We had gotten all the way down to the three. Uh, you know, a terrible penalty. Obviously wasn't trying to do it. My hand gets caught up. He did a good job of lifting my hand up, got it into the face mask, and I didn't even know I had his helmet until I looked down, and it's literally in my hand. Uh, so one of the, one of the all-time dumb penalties I've had in my career, um, and Boston did a great job of bailing me out big time uh, with a huge, uh, not only a huge throw by Carson, but a tremendous catch, uh, you know, to seal the victory. Um you know, that was that was a huge play. Um, and, uh, you know, I just kind of came back to the huddle and said, you know, hopefully somebody can make this right. You know, sorry, guys. And they came up big for me the very next play. Slay, you did very well uh, covering uh, Cooper last year in man situations. I know you're not going to give away the game plan for this weekend, but what was it uh, that, that made you have uh, success against him? What, and what, what kind of threat does he pose to uh, uh, as well? Uh, well, uh, going against um, guys like him, Kenny Allen, Devontae Allen, some of the best guys that kind of released off the ball, um, prepared me for a matchup like him. Um, definitely Devontae, you know. Uh, I obviously think Devontae Adams and uh, Kenny Allen and um, Amari Cooper are like the best guys that um, off the ball and releases. And, um, and, and um, 
and, you know, prepare me for them. And um, that was the good thing about both all of them. You know, they all talented receivers, and they all special at the line of scrimmage, and that's what I knew I had to do good at, and uh, I thought I was pretty good at playing them at the line of scrimmage. Is, is there something particular that you have to do for guys that are very quick off the line? I mean, not, it's not much you could do. You know, they're so good at it. You know, Amari Cooper, like I said, is one of the best to do it, man. Um, shoot, he honestly he helped me, you know, guard Devontae, you know, because it's just because of his ability to release like that off the line of scrimmage. And um, so uh, it's, it's it's hard, you know. You just got to be out there patient enough, you know. You got to understand that uh, guys like that, they go, they go win a couple off the line of scrimmage. They're going to win some routes, and uh, you got to just keep, uh, keep fighting. We'll go Kristen and then Dave. Hey, Slay, yeah, to that point, when you look at this this Cowboys offense, you know, the, the receiving core is really the only unit that hasn't been affected by injuries so much so far this season. So what is your takeaway when you look at, at the Dallas receivers coming into the Sunday night? Um, a very talented unit, man. Um, three guys that could be number ones anywhere, I feel like. Um, shoot, fast, quick. Uh, they got all type of one. Got guys that go deep. You got a guy that could be the uh, – you know, the slot guy, um, they're all versatile. All of them can play every position. And um, they're a good group, man. You know, I look forward to the challenge. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm hoping I can get them better as players and hope they can get me better as a player. Even then, Martin. It's like you're going to see maybe a, a young quarterback here with not a lot of a game film on him. How do you prepare against a guy who you haven't seen and haven't had a chance to see? Uh, well, I really um, – it's not much uh, as a as a corner. Uh, I I don't pay too much to like uh, a lot of quarterbacks. Only but guys as in like, you know, Aaron Rodgers. You know, guys that do a lot of checking and stuff like that. You know, uh, I never seen. Uh, my opinion, I just never see Dallas as a team that kind of checks a lot because they believe in they run. They got a great running back. Uh, they got a great receiving core. So I feel like uh, and they had a great offensive line. So um, I don't really watch the quarterback too much. So uh, not that as it them just because of the fact that. They kind of believe what they do, and um, they, they kind of like, hey, beat me, and I'm going to beat you, or whatever we go do. Martin and then Rob. Hey, Slay. So um, in the past, like, you know, guys like Amari, Cooper have had, like, really big games against the Eagles. I mean, do you kind of feel that, you know, this is probably one of the main reasons why the Eagles got you to go against the Cowboys and, you know, try to shut down their, their receivers? Uh, I, I mean, I'm, I, I honestly thought they just brought me here just to make their defense a lot better, man. Uh, be a help to their defense, you know. Not, I don't think it's just for a, a Pacific their guy, but uh, they brought me here to, uh, you know, play ball. And, uh, and they brought in a guy that is willing to, to compete at every play and a guy that's willing to go to work every day. We have time for a couple more, so we'll go Rob, Ed, and Rube. Hey, Slay, this is your first opportunity to get a taste of the Eagles-Cowboys rivalry. Uh, you're pretty active on social media, so I'm sure fans have pointed that out to you. What are some of the, you know, how aware are you of fans' hatred for the Cowboys, and have they, you know, have you been noticing it coming across through on your feed? Yeah, I know it's a lot, you know, uh, even in the locker room, you know, everybody be around here yelling Cowboys week, Cowboys week, and, you know, I'm, it's my first time actually being a part of this, man. I'm, I'm, I'm blessed enough and fortunate enough to be a part of this. I'm excited for it, man. This is, I, I understand how big it is, you know, uh, me being over there in a different division, you know, uh, we took the division game seriously, you know, but uh, I feel like this week is like a whole nother feeling. I feel like it's like either Super Bowl or, or, or die. So I'm like, oh my goodness, y'all serious about this? Okay, let's turn up then. <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, being this my first experience with this as in as an Eagle, man, uh, I, I look forward to it, man. I'm looking for the excitement and I'm looking forward to go out there competing against the uh, Dallas Cowboys. Ed and then Rube. Hi, Slay. That was kind of what I was going to bring up about the rivalry. But when you were in Detroit outside of Eagles Dallas, could you get a sense of it not being here? And were there any NFC North rivals that you consider almost as intense, at least going into the, going into the week? Not, not really, because of the fact that uh, and uh, and the other in um in my other division over there in uh, Detroit, it was like it's always a toss up. You never know, like because uh, you know, a year Chicago be good, Minnesota be good. You know, Green Bay be good. You know, we'll be all, we'll be good. So it's always a toss up. So it was, that was a, uh, that's why they called the Black and Blue Division because we was like, you know, uh, basically kind of going at it. It's always a toss up. I know early in my career over in Detroit, we was, uh, you know, every game, our last game of the year was up for the uh, NFC Championship. You know, well that conference. Uh, and you know, um, everybody was winning. You know, a lot of teams. So uh, I think we just consider all our team is rivalry. But over here, you know, it's really just. They don't really they don't like nothing about the Cowboys here. <laughs> nothing. 
And that's just funny. I'm like loving it. <laughs> Last question here with the Rube. Uh, it, it seemed like your eyes kind of lit up when you were talking about um, Amari Cooper and, and the Dallas wide receivers. Um, how much do you look forward to matchups like that? And how much do you think cornerbacks or really anybody is measured by how they do against uh, the best uh, in the business? Um, shoot, I'll just look forward to it. Like, I mean, this is not my first time. My first rodeo being against elite guys. But, you know, uh, I can say this is a very elite group. You know, um, like I said, all of them give me number ones. Um, so, uh, they got a great ability, you know, like I said, we, uh, we looking for the challenge, man. And, uh, we looking forward to go out there and, you know, try to get a W. Obviously you have a lot of history with Dallas, a little bit different this time. They might have a new quarterback, but they also have a new coaching staff, uh, offensively. Have, have you seen a lot of differences from what they were trying to do, even when they had Dak and, and Andy? Yeah, uh, no doubt. I'm definitely seeing, you know, and, and you guys know it before the injury, um, Dak was having a crazy year. You know what I'm saying? Uh, guy was throwing the ball all over the place. You know, they got, of course, you know, um, they receive a heavy over there with, uh, with with Coop and Gallup and, 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 the, and the new rookie addition. Um, but but definitely, um, they were definitely leaning, leaning more on Dak Prescott. Martin and then Pat Allen. Hey, Jalen. How does Slay change the way you go against their wide receivers? Um, you know, as having a guy maybe cover that one of those guys like one on one. I mean, how does that help the whole unit? I mean, defensive back unit as a whole. Yeah, I mean, you going out there and and you know um, he's he's traveling with the number one, um, and you know me being at safety. Um, I'm I'm already thinking in my mind at the end of the day. I'm not worried about 24. He's gonna go out there and do his job. You know what I'm saying? I think that's a that's a big boost and and definitely um, confidence and also you know just playing fast when you got a guy you know he's gonna go out there and do his job each and every play. Pat and then Jeff McLean. Jalen, when uh, when you look at tape, it's obviously limited of of Ben DiNucci, who looks like he's gonna start for for the Cowboys. Um, what do you take from what you've seen so far, and how much do you look back at college film of of what he's done? Yeah, um, I'll, I'll go for the second question first. Um, definitely got to gotta look back, you know, and, and, and see, you know, what, what throws did he like uh, to make, you know, in college? Um, did he like the, the scramble, you know, when pressure came? Did he like the – when it wasn't pressure, he was just sitting in the pocket and it opened up, did he like the scramble? Was he scrambling the throw or was he scrambling the run? Um, then outside of that, when you're saying watching on film, I mean, at the end of the day, man, regardless of what round you picked in, um, guys, an NFL quarterback, and with that being said, first, you know, first string, second string, third string, you got to know at the end of the day, he's going to be able to make a lot of good throws out there. Jeff and then Dean Zangaro. Jalen, in watching a film of how other defenses have played the Cowboys receivers, has there been any unifying theme, or have they basically stuck to their to their basic defenses, or have they kind of change things because you're going up against a really potent uh, offense when it comes to those three guys. You're talking about other defenses or ours? Uh, other defenses that you're watching on film, how they played yeah. those three guys in the first uh, seven games. Yeah, but for, for the most part, um, you know, I'm, I'm used to, you know, watching like like Washington and New York just because we play, you know, them in the division and I may be watching a, a Dallas, say, for instance, and they're playing against Washington and now I gotta watch, you know, their their defense play or whatever the question may, I mean, whatever the situation may be. But uh, I mean, for the most part, you see guys, you know, um, playing them, playing them regular. I don't think you see anybody really changing anything. Um, at the end of the day, your your eleven guys out there on defense, you gotta trust that they're gonna go out there and do their job. Even then, Rob. Hey, Jalen Slay was talking to us about learning the the Cowboys Eagles rivalry. Now that you've been here for a while, do you kind of enjoy getting to introduce your new teammates to that whole thing? Oh yeah, no doubt. Uh, definitely this this week um, we had weights today before practice. You know, a lot of guys had a lot of energy. You know, I kind of me and Rodney kind of looked over the sleigh and we're like, "Hey man, it's Dallas week." You know, he kind of looking like, "Yeah, yeah, I know." We like, "Nah, like it's Dallas week." Regardless, like this this is the one. Like I told him, you know, from my first day in, in Philly, I was out um, eating a cheesesteak, and I remember I had a fan tell me. Uh, my rookie year, man. I don't care if y'all lose every game. As long as y'all beat Dallas twice a year, I'm, my year is made. 
So it's, 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 that, it's that serious for sure. Robin and Zach. Hey, Jalen, when teams go up against a backup quarterback or a third string guy, sometimes there's a tendency to let down. Does the fact that you guys have had so much success when you've been beat up, banged up and faced adversity uh, take away from the fear that maybe, you know, you're going to go into this game with a, a little bit less than uh, maximum effort because you know that teams can rally around their backup because you've seen it. You've been there. You've been part of it. No, nah, at this point right now, we're in the hole. And, and I mean, I think our record speaks for itself. We haven't played to our standard um, in the tradition that we built here these past four years. Um, regardless, back up or not, um, we, we know that in the NFL, it's any given Sunday. It don't matter who's out there. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, for sure, we're going to go out there and we're going we're gonna to play the game like they got all 11 of their starters out there, for sure. We have time for two more, so we'll go Zach and then Ed Kratz. Hey, Jalen, I think you blitzed about six times against the Giants. Um, you might have blitzed, uh, you know, six times in your first four years here. Uh, uh, how do you like blitzing? Um, how have you tried to Im improve at it and – and how big is is that a part of your role? Yeah, I love it. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm an aggressive guy, and and, and I love when, you know, I hear Swartz, you know, uh, call me on a blitz or whatever the situation may be because I feel like I'm going to be the guy, you know, if, if not to, you know, get a sack, you know, disrupt that pocket, get that quarterback out the pocket to where now um, he's a little bit dismantled and, and he has to make a quicker decision than what he wanted to. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm all for that. And um, outside of just working on it, um, going down there with the D-line anytime I got free time before practice, um, during practice, uh, I mean, e even after practice, trying to work D-line moves because knowing that these guards and tackles and even some of these big tight ends, you know, they got long arms, um, and they're going to put their hands on me, but I got to use my ability, which is my quickness um, and my speed to, to get around them. Last question here with Ed. Hey, Jalen. Um, just... It looks like you guys are really starting to get healthy again here. We saw some guys at practice today. Avante Maddox will probably be back Sunday. What is it? How big a boost is it to get Avante back in particular and then just some of the rest of these guys in general? Yeah, uh, definitely big to, to get Avante back. Um, he's a guy who's, you know, he knows the system. He's been in it for three years now. Um, and a guy who's been playing at a high level for us. And then you talk about, you know, getting guys back. Uh, me being in the league now. Uh, going on five years, the biggest thing that I have learned is injuries are going to happen. And and with that being said, um, selfishly, you would you would actually want them to happen earlier in the season, you know, and, and you get your guys back on the back end rather than, you know, having guys get hurt later in the season and you trying to go into the postseason and different things like that. And now you're playing with guys who really didn't have a lot of game experience. When you got guys who get kind of injured earlier and you got guys who have to step up, now you – you're gaining more people who have more game experience just in case something does happen. And like I said, on the back end, you get your starters and additional players back. So just to follow up, last year it was kind of the guys getting hurt late and going into the postseason banged up. This year you're saying it's more middle of the season and they're, and they're coming back for the second half, right? Yeah, it's, all, it's always great to have, for sure. I know you're getting open a lot uh, in games. You had some, some drops or some mishaps or, uh, a couple of games ago, but then you caught – back-to-back 50-yard -back catches in, in two games. How much has that helped your confidence kind of moving forward? And, and, and you know, we saw your reaction after the catch. How big of a moment was that for you to come up big in that, that play? Uh, yeah, it definitely helps a lot. I uh, feel like I'm getting in the groove a little bit with the game speed and everything like that. And, uh, yeah, it just feels good to, to, to make plays on the field, help my teammates out. Ed and then Martin. Hey, John, uh, we talked to Coach Moorhead yesterday, and he mentioned um, so having, you know, telling you that you may have played timid against Washington, first NFL game, and, and then the first play from the Rams game after you got in a little pushing and shoving with Jalen Ramsey that, you know, you really you got your competitive juices flowing. Was that kind of a, a you know, watershed moment for you, a good learning point, um, you know, when, when Coach Hyde, uh, Moorhead told you that? Uh, yeah, uh, definitely a good uh, coaching moment. Uh, just let me know, like, how you felt like I was playing and everything and, you know, just moving forward and then getting better. Martin and then Bo. Hey, John. Um, so, like, these last several weeks, you, Travis, you know, Greg Ward have been kind of like the main receivers and stuff. 
how, how valuable of an experience has that been for you and how much confidence does that give you like going forward towards, you know, the rest of the season? Uh, definitely a good experience, you know, um, uh, definitely value every, every play you get. So, uh, don't take nothing for granted and to just work hard every day because you never know when, uh, you'll be up. Oh, and then Daniel. John, along the lines of, you know, you getting in sort of those, uh, you know, pushing ma uh, matches with Jalen Ramsey and those guys and, and not being timid. Are you a, are you like a, a smack talker on the field too? <laughs> no, I don't really say nothing. <laughs> You don't say a lot, so you're just you're just uh, getting into it, just with your hands. I'm just trying to block for the running back. Daniel and then Dave. John, uh, you know, along those lines too. Um, you know, where does that kind of edge come from? You know, where does that kind of uh, drive come from? You know, earlier in your career, where when did you kind of develop that? Uh, I always like blocking, uh, even before now. So I mean, I just I just take it on to. Make sure that I got my man when I'm blocking so that whoever the ball carrier is will have a good lane to run. Dave and then Damo. Hey, John. Uh, Jalen Rager hasn't been able to play for a while. Do you kind of sense his excitement just being back out at the practice field? And, and how excited are you to, to maybe get a chance to watch him play again? Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, everybody happy for Jalen that he coming back, you know, and everybody excited. So it's about to be fun. <laughs> we'll take two more here with Damo and then Rube. Yeah, John, how helpful has Greg been to you and the rest of the young players as far as helping you see what you don't see, maybe be, uh, being a rookie and understand what you don't understand? Uh, yeah, Greg, definitely helpful um, in every aspect, on and off the field. And uh, without Greg, I definitely wouldn't be, you know, in the position I am today. So I tip my head to him. Last one here with Rube. Uh, Greg was actually saying the other day when we talked to him, I think on Monday, how close you guys all are in, in the wide receiver room. And with uh, Deshaun being hurt, unfortunately, and Alshon being hurt, it's really been, you know, a lot of young guys, that, uh, you know, who've been playing. How much do you lean on each other uh, for support, for, uh, you know, for, for tips, just as friends? Uh, what's it like with this group? Uh, yeah, everybody helps everybody, uh, regardless of what it is, big or small. Uh, I feel like, I can go to anybody in the receiver room and talk to them about anything. I feel like they could come to me and whatever they, you know they're going through or if they need help, I feel like they could come to me. So it's just it's just a good bond in the receiver room. Congrats on the World Series. Um, so, you know, I know after the uh, 49ers game, you were kind of bummed about TJ Edwards getting injured. I know you guys are close. How nice is it to kind of see him back on the practice field? How much has he been chopping at the bit to kind of get out there? Yeah, you know, he, uh, he's been chopping at the bits for a few weeks now, so it's nice to, you know, with all the rules and all the IR stuff, for him to, you know, be able to be back out there with us, moving around and uh, feeling good. How did he look today? He looked good. He's ready to go. He's Like I said, he's been ready to go. He's been running, you know, with the trainers and stuff. Uh, I'm excited to see what he's going to do this week. Ed and then John. Hey, Alex, <clears throat> along those lines, you, you guys are starting to get some players back now, healthy both sides of the ball. How big a boost is it to, um, to get those guys some of these guys back healthy. Yeah, it's huge. It's just exciting to have everybody back at practice. You know, you kind of feel that that team camaraderie coming back together, just, you know, bringing all the guys and just, you know, seeing guys that, you know, you haven't seen make plays in a while, just, you know, even make plays today. And, it, you know, it builds that builds that energy up for a week. John and then Dave. Hey, Alex. Um, you had a ton of success up in Canada, uh, obviously, as a defensive player. How much has this playing time and the success you've had how much has it done for your confidence to say, hey, I can play in this league and I can play at a high level? Yeah, uh, obviously, you know, yeah, I played a lot, a lot of snaps in Canada, you know, I think, you know, however many games it ended up being. So, yeah, getting to, you know, I've always believed in myself, you know, I, you know, everything I was doing, whether it was in camp or practices, I was always believing in myself, but be able to, but being able to do it in games, you know, it just builds, builds a confidence in myself to know that I can, you know, continue to keep going with, you know, whatever reps they give me. Dave and then Jeff McLean. Hey, Alex, have you guys been watching some JMU tape this week, trying to learn about the Cowboys' new quarterback, and, and what have you learned so far? <laughs> uh, I know the coaches have been doing more, but, you know, uh, he, you know, he's a good quarterback. I know as an FCS guy, JMU, uh, 
you know, competed. I, they're the only ones that beat North Dakota State ever in this last 10 years. So, uh, you know, he's a good quarterback. Uh, obviously, you know, we expect a little different things, you know, from him, you know, but, you know, we'll watch watch the film as we need as we go. Jeff McLean and then Jeff Skaversky. Alex, how did your uh, blitz up the middle that threw the holding uh, go over during film study? <laughs> it was uh, – it, it was quick. You know, we watched it. You know, it was a good uh, good timing. You know, we got the protection we wanted with the 5-0. And that, 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 they're more happy that we got the protection we wanted more than what happened. Do you do blitz a lot, a lot, a lot in Canada? Ah, uh, I don't know if I would say a ton. But, I mean, we had a good – when I was in Canada, we had a good front four just like we do here. So it was kind of mixed in when the team needed it. And usually kind of it, it just helped those guys really be free and be able to have one-on-ones. Jeff Skaversky and then Zach. Hey, what's up, Alex? Hope all's well. How much preparing are you doing for really both quarterbacks? I mean, it doesn't look like Andy may play based on the way things are right now, but are you preparing for both? And what is the extra challenge when you may have to do so here? Yeah, uh, we'll prepare for both. You know, obviously there's the film for the last two games with Andy and then, uh, you know, Thankfully, you know, Ben was in game. So now we know, you know, we, there, there is some tape, you know, from the back half of that game last week. And, you know, we're just, you know, prepare for both. Even we have to watch, you know, film from the beginning of the season, just, you know, how their offense rolls. You know, they're going to kind of do those things. And we're, we'll just, you know, whoever eventually, you know, by Friday or Saturday, whoever they pinpoint as a starter is who we're going to, you know, fully attack when those days come. But is that more challenging when, you know, you only have so much time in a week when you do have to worry about maybe – maybe two quarterbacks yeah you know i think we you know the coaches do a great job preparing us you know during the week so we'll get some looks you know for what andy will do and some for what ben will do but you know with an offense like that they kind of they'll do a lot of the same things it's not like they're going to come in and redesign their entire offense based off of who's that quarterback we'll take one more here with zach hey alex i know you said you were always confident in yourself but up until a few weeks ago the only evidence that, that you could play defense in the nfl was preseason film and, and practice reps. So what do you think you've showed these past few weeks and the past two games in particular as a starting linebacker? Uh, I think the, the same things I've shown in those preseason games and practice film, you know, that, you know, I'll, you know, make the plays that come to me and be in the right spot when it, when they don't, you know, so, uh, and that, you know, I'll have that high energy and be able to be around the ball.